subject that seduced me very much because it's very close to the person, it's very close to women, it's a world of uh, magic, it's a world of uh, desire, desirability, uh, dreams. It, it means a lot of things all together. I'm here in Milan to discover something of a secret and I'm about to enter the world of Giampiero Bodino's Maison where I'm going to discover some amazing high jewellery. Now you may not have heard of his name before but he is in fact one of the most influential creators in the world of luxury today and what he does with this jewellery is to make it so special that the only place you can see it is here in the Villa Mozart and meet Giampiero Bodino himself. You don't buy just an object, you buy an emotion, you buy a moment. And the moment of the buy, uh, or the moment when, when you buy something, uh, for me it's important and should be treated in the same way that we treat our jewellery, in the same way. We are very lucky because we found this amazing place which is discreet, it's beautiful, uh, allowed myself to, to uh, uh, show my pieces to a client in the best uh, way and in the way that I really believe uh, is the right way. In jewellery there are two kinds of dreams that you can play with. One is from, it's from the material, so you can dream to have a, a very special stone or, or a specific color for that stone can be uh, an idea of an ancient uh, uh, medieval jewels or uh, using um, stones that you can fix it and put together or can be uh, a decoration from a, uh, from a, I don't know, a facade of a building that you would like to uh, uh, transform in a jewel in order to send a kind of a new message. I have a very personal view on design. I think uh, uh, to be uh, uh, specialized in design doesn't make sense for me. You, you are a designer, you design. You can design a vase, you can design a table, a piece of furniture, but you can really uh, use this type of uh, knowledge that you had in other fields in something different. And one of the first things I saw is that he actually sketches each jaw himself, but his illustrations are so beautiful that they are in their own right works of art, and then you see the finished product, and that's when you get the real gas factor. So these are all masterpieces of Capo di Opera, which are all one of a kind. What I like about this is how the movement from the different rows of pearls mixed with the rubelites and these incredibly um, refined cameo carvings all come alive in a necklace that is both classical yet very contemporary. So the cameo is the perfect idea to, to put together the portrait and the jewel. Yeah. What I don't want at all is to uh, destroy, it's not the proper word, smontare, dismount uh -huh. all the pieces. Mm. I don't like to touch, to, to touch uh, work that has been made maybe 200 years ago. I'm just working with the cameo that are old and unmounted. Although it seems quite new, this idea of having a whole maison in which to come and discover the jewellery and personally to know who is behind the creations, it is in fact the old-fashioned way to buy jewellery because that's how it used to work before. Your jeweller knew you, you commissioned pieces, he knew what would suit you. So I think this is more of a renaissance than a revolution. This is a beautiful coming together of historical references, incredible craftsmanship, but also a very modern way to wear jewellery. I think it's, uh, honestly, Italy, it's uh, an element of inspiration which is absolutely strong in my work. Since, but since ever, from recalling uh, views of uh, cities that I visited in the past when I was young with my family, uh, that remind like a picture in my mind and uh, I can't live without it.
If you want to know all that's happening in the world of jewellery and watches, visit my website, thejewelleryeditor.com.